If you have certain brands you keep coming back to over and over again, certain models from a certain brand that you just can't quit using, they're in your EDC system, your daily system, your weapon system, I have a new term for you. And by the way, I'm the same way. I am. You, sir, are a stage four gear clinger. New term for TMP. What do you say? I said stage four gear clinger. There you go. New term. You're a stage four gear clinger. And like I said, I'm the same way. I admit it. I am. Now, I try to be an objective reviewer. I think I do a pretty good job at that. I've posted a ton of videos given all types of brands and models, fair and free, always free publicity. When they get it right, they get it right, and I say so on camera, and I love them. But in my own systems and in TMP systems, like for testing and review, I tend to gravitate towards um, the same brands. I think you know where I'm going with this, right? I too, ladies and gentlemen of the project, am a stage four gear clinger. <laughs> don't ask me what stages one through three are. I, I don't really know. I just thought stage four would indicate the most serious manifestation of the disease, and so I just went there. I'm a stage four gear clinger, just like you. Some brands, Leatherman, Cold Steel, Spider Co. Here's my EDC today, Spider Co. Yeah, Victorinox. Mountain Smith, I love Mountain Smith stuff. It's just awesome, and I could go on. And of course, you know I'm going here. Of course, we are going to say Olite. Olite, because it is just a proven brand for me in TMP and in my personal systems. Again, as you've seen in about 100 videos, that's not an exaggeration, my S20 baton. I will continue to show it. And this particular model is not made anymore. There's S2 and S2R. I will review those separately. Love this light. I use it all the time. Daily, probably about six times a day. I'll just clip it to the hat, make it into a headlamp. I use it to illuminate steel targets with my special holders I've created. I'll show those to you in a different review. And that way we can see the steel targets at like 400 yards at night. And this little tiny light with its 18650 18650 power cell is doing all the lighting and they don't let me down they just work over and over again rain snow heat oh light yeah i'm a stage four gear clinger for oh light here we go with a weapon light review and uh, i have had requests for weapon light reviews from my tm peers and patreon they've been asking hey dude i have new guns i like your past videos but do you have any new recommendations so what do i do I go looking around, I go researching, and I didn't initially go to Olight. I, there's a lot of great lighting companies, and don't take what I'm saying to mean that I, I'm like not in love with them too. I'm just saying what I gravitate towards and use a lot, usually Olight. I've done Nightcore reviews, Phoenix reviews, great companies, Streamlight reviews, another great company, and more. Go in my playlist, uh, lighting products in the main channel. You'll see what I'm talking about. And by the way, all those lights are still excellent. They'll still work. But I'll tell you what, this new batch from Olight that I purchased, by the way, with TMP Patreon money. Thank you, TMP Patreon. Yeah, I purchased it. I didn't get it for free from Olight. They are impressive. It's next level stuff. I mean, it is refined. And a lot of the things that I have ranted about in my past lighting products reviews, Mm, they've taken care of. Is that a coincidence? Are they watching the videos? I don't really know and I don't really care. It's just resulted in better products. One of them is the freaking packaging is perfect. This is a package for this Olight PL Pro Valkyrie, the focus of this tabletop review. Look at how efficient it is. Not a lot of plastic. It's not a huge box. It's tiny. It's trim. It's efficient. Perfect. And it just transfers over to the products as well. And this is the first Olight that I will review. You'll see others coming down the pike. Maybe like this one. Speaking of perfection, the newer baton, here's the Pro Rechargeable in Titanium. Oh my goodness, isn't that sick? That is so cool. Magnetic recharging base, just like this one has. Dude, <laughs> Olight is cutting edge. Cutting edge, and no, they're not the only company doing this. And I don't mean 
to make it sound like they are. I'm just telling you about my own weirdness, my own stage four clinginess, just like you have. Yeah. First things first, let's introduce the tabletop players for this weapon light review, tabletop variety. I've got name tapes, couple patches, nothing fancy, bigcartel.com. The host weapon is an EAA Witness Polymer full size. Watch my review on that. That was a great high value 9mm combat worthy pistol. It's going to host our PL Pro. It does a pretty good job of it. And then I have a beautiful 1 to 200 scale KC135R, y'all. Look at that. Never seen before in any tabletop review or elsewhere. It is new to the Nut and Fancy Aviation Museum. 1 to 200 scale means it can actually fit on the table. If it was 1 to 72, it'd be like just peeking in there from the upper right hand and by the way this is tail number 0106 an aircraft i did fly operationally now i could tell you where that was but and then i'd have to kill you <laughs> it is secret let's just say it was a hot and dry location that i flew that one yeah i think it's secret i'd have to look in my logbook maybe i could tell you later 0106 this is in the livery of the alabama air national guard out of birmingham alabama this is an r model again I flew most models of KC-135R. Beautiful model. This is actually die cast. It's not plastic. 1 to 200 scale. These are markings for refueling so the receiver pilot can tell where he or she is at. These are PDI lights, pilot directional lights. That's up, down, that's aft and forward. They will flash automatically according to boom position and they can stay in the air refueling envelope. Like I say, there's no kicking ass without tanker gas. Two squadron coins on the table. Bradley IFE in 164 scale. I bought this in 2004 for seven bucks. Yeah, at a, like a thrift store. It's like called Tuesday morning. They had a bunch of these for, on clearance. I was like, those are cool. Aviate watch, that's a 4068. I'll probably tabletop that separate, separately. We need to get going on the weapon light. Are you ready? About damn time, nothing I've been waiting. I know you have. I appreciate your patience. And uh, like I said, I have gotten some reviews for Weapon Lights from TMP Patreon members. Thanks for joining, supporting the flow, and more importantly, for giving me the money to go out and buy this stuff. That's all I do. I'm independent. I just buy it. And I bought some other lights just to give away to TMP Patreon members from Olight. So I spent a lot of money recently to get you this stuff. Okay, I'm going to start off with philosophy of use. And I have... Uh, brace yourself, some more new terms. <laughs> oh crap, I can't keep track, nothing. Uh, these are simple. When it comes to weapon lights, I think of them as tier one, tier two, tier three. Starting from the smallest and maybe not so bright to the heavier and more bright options. Tier one, for instance, would be the Streamlight TLR8, a fabulous tier one option actually, very SAWC compliant. This is a laser light module, simple UI, Runs off a simple, or I'm sorry, a single CR123 battery. I love it. It's great. Cost effective. I'll put a link to this below too. I love, watch for this tabletop. As a tier one option, fantastic. To me, and your mileage may vary, but tier one means to about 25 yards as a weapon light. Okay, but is this a light that I would want to put on an AR-15, an AK variant, a shotgun? Maybe a shotgun I would do it. Uh, because I think a shotgun is like out to 25 yards, but the other ones I want more oomph I want more power and uh, That will lead us to this one, but this is by the way an IWI Masada HOF GTW pistol love it go watch that review great host weapon for this and uh, it, it did all the testing by the way of this light we did ranch soldier boy with the TLR 8 in the snow and Again out to 25 yards Fantastic. If it goes beyond 25 yards, especially in the snow, inclement weather, I want more power. I want to go into what I will call a tier two weapon light. That's this one right here. The Olight PL comes in two different versions, a battery powered version, the PL, I believe, and the PL Pro, this rechargeable version. I wanted max power for my application. So if I can do these two things for TMP purchased items, I'm super happy. Do I need it in TMP to do my business? Like test guns out in the desert? The answer was this uh, for this light was yes, I do. I can totally use it. And will it fill the needs of my TMPers? And both of those combine in this tabletop review. Let me go to the first one. Can I use it in, in gun testing? 
What I normally do out in the desert after the sun sets, gets dark out there. My days, by the way, sometimes are 12 hours long. That's no exaggeration. Talk to my crew members. I keep shooting after dark, but I need to illuminate a wide area, a lot of steel targets. I used to use tier one weapon lights, maybe a couple tier two options, but I found they were so weapon specific, it took me too much time to attach them to every gun. And so what I ended up doing is attaching these lights to my Nissan Titan, the TMP truck. And those are Baja Designs, super bright lights. They are fantastic. So I'll pull the Titan up and I'll just flood the whole area with light. And I, you've seen that on camera for many years now. And again, those are the Baja Designs lights. That's not a perfect system either because terrain is sometimes a problem. I can't maneuver the truck where I'm shooting. I don't want to run over sagebrush and stuff out there. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That's where this one comes in. So the first thing I love about the Olight PL Pro, this rechargeable version, is that it's really easy to take on and off a gun, right? And so it's not really specific to a gun. It does have two inserts that you can change out so it will mate with your pick rail, your 1913 rail, and then all it is is a quick release clamp. And time is of the essence when I'm out there, and so I'm thinking to myself, this is a system that I can use that it can go from one weapon to the next quickly. And it has tier two capability, right? So it can go out, I will say to about a hundred yards. A hundred yards to me is about tier two. Now, if you look at the specifications from Olight on this PL Pro, the rechargeable version, which is carrying a 900 milliamp, 3.6 volt lithium polymer battery. Whew, that's a mouthful. They're gonna say 280 meters. In fact, you may have seen that right on the box. And that's optimistic. I generally cut everything in half. Whatever. I'll do the same. I'm gonna say about 100 yards. This thing can get it done. So I took it out the other night on this host gun, the EAA polymer, and I was just checking it out. Dudes, I was impressed. I was like, this is legit. It floods the area with light, which I want with a weapon light. So it's not gonna be like a laser beam circle. And I think earlier weapon lights did that. So they, they kind of use it as kind of an aiming device, aiming assistance device. And I think they got smart and said, well, for a weapon light, you really wanna flood the area with light. So it's more of a dispersion beam on this PL Pro, which I think is perfect. And out to hundred yards, my estimation only, I think it will be completely usable. That makes it a tier two. Now the trade-off for that, there's a couple things you're gonna trade off. It's the old firepower versus mobility discussion, y'all. It's gonna be heavier and it's gonna stick out past some muzzles if you put on a pistol. On my scale, this was about 3.8 ounces and that's not super lightweight, but it is rechargeable. You don't have to replace the batteries and this thing has a ton of light. This TLR8 is gonna weigh a lot less than that. It's more compact, but it doesn't have the power. Okay, it's a tier one. So a one, you know, single one, two, three power cell can only do so much, even with a very efficient LED. This is a Cree XHP35 and the PL Pro. It does a great job, but it also has the oomph of that power cell. In my past flashlight reviews, my past lighting products reviews, I've always said it goes to the battery. There's only so much you can do with a 123 power cell, even two of them. And really there's only so much you can do with an 18650. And so I think companies like Olight are going, well, if you want max throw, max power, and convenience of rechargeability, go with rechargeable. And that's why we have this battery right here. Now the downside would be of this tier two light is that the battery is built into the unit. You can't replace it. So in WROL and power outages that last a long time, is it your best option? Depends. Do you have a way to charge it up? I personally do. I have a big lithium battery that I can charge a whole bunch of stuff with. I keep it charged all the time. It could charge this thing up, I don't know, a hundred times. So the answer is yes. In my system, I have a way to recharge it. Now, if I go away from home base, not so much. In that case, I recommend you go with the regular non-rechargeable Olight PL. Maybe a little less bright, Maybe not quite as much throw, but you do have a battery interchange capability. What's that? 
Oh yeah, a tier three light, you're asking? Yeah, that's a ludicrous power weapon light. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I've ever reviewed those. They're the ones that are big and they have tremendous throw, a legit out to 300 yards. Yeah, you could illuminate a KC-135 flying overhead into the pattern at Hill Air Force Base with your uh, tier uh, three handheld. You wouldn't be aiming at that plane when it's on a weapon. Handheld, you could use it as an aircraft spotting light. Yeah, those they're out there. I've never reviewed one that's specifically made for a weapon. I did review that huge uh, O-Light years ago. It's a handheld, also rechargeable. And I had kind of the same discussion that too about power power cell so this is a tier two option compact for what it is relatively lightweight for what it is it is sticking past the muzzle on this full-size nine millimeter polymer pistol i think for your ar-15 great option combat shotgun great option it is shock isolated uh whatever other type of tactical carbon you might have ak variant rifle you bet and pistols also now, I will say this, and I always keep it very real with you guys. Think if you really need a tier two light on your pistol. I know I have it mounted here on a pistol, but it's for hosting purposes. It fits in the frame of the camera. It was easier to test with a pistol. Um, I think most of y'all would be happy with a tier one, to be totally honest, I, I do. Out to 25 yards, good to go. That's home distance for sure. Home defense gun, tier one, and plus you can get the laser light combination like this, Streamlight TLR8. But if you want more, if you really want to flood the, the area with light, dude, I highly, highly recommend the Olight Pro rechargeable because it has more power, more lighting. Here we go with the modes. And another thing they got right, going back to previous rants, don't make your user interface complicated. Just slow it down, make it simple, and it is simple. You just push on either lever at the rear of the lighting unit with the Olight PL Pro. Valkyrie, by the way, is its name. And then when you want to turn it off, click again. Okay, when it comes on for the first time, 1500 lumens, really clean beam. Again, a good blend of throw and area coverage. I don't see any artifacts in it. And when I was testing it, I was again, super, super impressed. You'll see that video extensively in this tabletop review. I'll roll it in. Really nice throw, really clean coverage. Very impressive. And then, if you want to increase your burn time, you can go down to 300 lumens. Okay, and the way you're gonna do that is just double press either of the paddles at the rear of the unit with a quick double press. Then if you wanna access strobe mode, you press both paddles at the same time, like this. I kinda like that it's harder to actuate, the strobe mode, because I myself, uh, I don't use it, even on a weapon light. I know the discussion, and we've had it before on camera, haven't we? That strobe disorients your opponent, you know, and it's kind of nice in a home defense situation. I'm not gonna say it isn't, but I just don't use it. And so it's a little bit harder to access in the PL Pro, and I don't mind that. And that's your UI, short and sweet. So either side, it's ambidextrous, of course. We don't have any remote switches to worry about. Just a quick press, like that. Oh, and it does have a uh, momentary mode, and the way you're gonna do that is press and hold, and then just release when you're done with it. And that's momentary. How excellent is that? Pretty clean. Once again, if you wanna have it come on, quick press, leave it, turn it off. Then if you want momentary, press and hold, and then release. So it's not a quick press and release. Uh, you'll get the hang of it when you practice with your PL Pro. This is the magnetic charging base right here. And here is the cord that it comes with. Most of these O-lights have the same cord. So totally convenient. It can recharge from any USB outlet. I like to use like 2.4 amp or higher. Burn times are decent for the light considering the power. O-light says at 1500 lumens, expect 1.5 hours to 45 minutes. I actually think that is a pretty accurate estimation. I do. 45 minutes if it's cold. And then at 300 lumens, expect about 90 minutes of power. Again, you'll access, access that by a quick press. So that's high, low, high. I did not specifically test those run times, but they strike me as being pretty accurate. 
on the Olight PL Pro. Again, you can go with the non-rechargeable version if you want. I love this desert tan version, FDE version, look at that. So cool. I just love it when a company gets, uh, I don't know, special with their finishing. Valkyrie PL Pro, good looking light, simple, rugged, IPX6 rated for its waterproofness. And no, I'm not gonna go scuba diving with this one. I just ruined a flashlight doing it this summer. I'll, I'll tabletop it somewhere along the way. It just it wasn't great. It was my fault, not the light's fault. And it just had some water come in it. You can tell uh, looking at this Cree XHP35 and the depth of the reflector that it's not really a thrower. A thrower is going to be really deep in its reflector. This is kind of a blend, kind of an area light. You do have a crenellated bezel here. Not really serious for striking. That's something though. The finishing on this and the quality is fantastic. Something we've uh, you know, come to expect from Olight. You know, when I take my Olight S20 out and I compare it either against this or that other one I showed you, this one right here, I will say these ones blow it away. I mean, this wasn't bad, but the finishing on this, the knurling on this is like next level. Again, this is a Baton Pro right here in titanium finish. Super cool. Look at that knurling, dude. Freaking nay. I thought the knurling on that was okay. That is awesome knurling. Again, th that was one of my rants. If you're going to knurl it, make it aggressive so it really does the job. Okay, watch for my tabletop on that. It's I'll put a link below. This is fantastic. It's heavier, a little bit bigger than my very compact and lightweight 18650 powered uh, S20. I'm not stowing this light, by the way. I'm going to keep using it over and over, but it's nice to have some fresh blood. So anyways, Olight PL Pro Valkyrie, rechargeable weapon light option. And I didn't mention this, it's a good range light. So if you go shooting at a dark range, or if you're training as a police officer, a pro-constitution law enforcement officer, uh, it's a good high use weapon because you won't be going through batteries. You just recharge it over and over and over again. Be good for range uh, officers. It's a great high power weapon light for the applications I've discussed. AR-15, tactical carbine, AK variant rifles, shotguns even. Uh, I absolutely love it. I think it really doesn't have any downsides other than it's a little bit heavier and a little bit bigger. But remember, it's the old discussion of firepower versus mobility, and you're getting a lot of firepower with this. 1,500 lumens with a pretty good burn time and a, a, a great mount system. I love the mount system of the Valkyrie. It's super easy to use. And again, that's why I'm thinking in the future, maybe I don't have to go through all that rigmarole of pulling up my Titan truck. I'll just put it on the gun I'm, being, I'm having tested and run it from there. Wrapping it up, Weapon Light Review, Nut and Fancy Project. Thanks again to TMP Patreon members or whatever other donation service I might use in the future for purchasing this light for test and review. Signing off, we'll see you next time, Nut and Fancy.